Good morning. I'm Athanasia Kolovu. I'm a member of the Clarin EL team and I will be presenting our infrastructure. I'm going to start with a bit of introduction. So Clarin EL is a Greek national uh, infrastructure, part of uh, Apollonis infrastructure together with Daria and Diaz. It is a certified bridge center and case center and has been awarded the court trust seal, also listed in 3.3 data. Our network consists of organizations from all over Greece. We have currently 14 members, nine universities and five research centers, all cooperating for the construction and operation of the Clarin Air infrastructure. Any user affiliated to those organization, organizations can use their academic uh, logins to uh, gain access rights on the platform, but we also uh, can have regist users registering for an account on the platform to gain access rights. For visitors, we offer limited access rights. So Clarin EL consists of three main building blocks. First, we have the platform where everything from sharing, accessing and processing resources happens. We have the portal that offers informative material and supports the services. And we have the NLP Knowledge Center for awareness raising and more focused training events. Now I will dive more into the platform. Um, first, there is a repository of language, of language resources, a system focusing for Greek language particularly, uh, where we are documenting, storing, sharing, searching, retrieval, and downloading, of course, language resources. At the moment, uh, there are around 800 resources contained in the repository, uh, with first being Corpora, followed by lexical resources, tool services, and language descriptions. And on the other hand, we have the processing services that are workflows that perform core NLP tasks like sentence splitting, tokenization, name edit recognition, and more uh, specific tasks like uh, text classification or verbal aggression analysis. And finally, we have some special services that perform data format and character encoding conversion. Now, user comes on Clarin EL to view the catalog of resources. This is a list of metadata. They can browse and search the catalog using free text or the facets. And at some point they will realize that we hold resources that have data and resources that don't contain data. So one might wonder, but why would you have resources that don't have data? Well, we allow the providers to create an anticipation on the data that may be prepared and that they are not ready to be published yet. And also we allow providers to provide useful web pages and data that are maybe hosted somewhere else. What about the resources that have data? The resources that have data can be downloaded for, by all users, and they can be processed with Clarin EL services, which is a service with something that we offer to registered users only. Now, our users in Clarin are assigned to different roles. We have the providers, we are responsible for creating the resources and uploading their content files. We have the validators. This is a role given organization that are, are responsible for checking the consistency of the metadata in the data itself. And we have the supervisor, also a role per organization, who has a final say, the final word, before the resource is made public, and he can also unpublish it. Now, for, all, for the users, in order to collaborate, to collaborate together, we have a special mechanism in, in place that ensures a solid publication process. So a curator can either upload an XML file on the platform or create the, or create, uh, the resource using the metadata editor. At this point, this new resource is saved in a draft state. So the curator can co continue editing the record without losing any work. Now, when all the mandatory elements are being filled out, the record is considered syntactically valid. And the curator can continue editing it, of course, but he can also submit it for publication. At this point, an email will be sent to the supervisor who will come and assign the record to the validator. The validator, as I said before, will check the consistency of the metadata and the data itself and has two choices. Either to send the record back to the provider for him to check it and uh, correct it maybe or add something, or he can push it to the next state. He can approve it and push it for publication. At this point, another email is sent to the supervisor who will now come approve the record and publish it. After publication, no, no, no longer editing can take place. So this is a solid uh, six step process, which seems 
complicated, but it's not because it is all happening inside the platform. So the resources that we host that we hold can be of different modalities. They can be text, they can be video, they can be audio files, but also lexical conceptual resources, language models, or processing tools. And during the deposition of resources, we know that some providers may find issues. Uh, so we're there to support them uh, in the data formats, in the metadata completion, using different channels. So we have recommended format guidelines. There is a thorough online documentation for metadata and data preparation, and lots of video tutorials and help desks. And here I would like to know that all of our resources include metadata and all of the resources are tagged according to the provider's organization. If an individual who doesn't belong to an organization wants to post a resource, we mark this resource as belonging to the hosted repository. So in our platform, in order for a resource to be processable by the integrated tools, it must be in text format. And also we have converters from PDF and MS Word files that convert those files to the text format for the processing purposes. We favor and promote open licenses, but we also uh, cherish and respect uh, the provider's wish on the distribution of the data. And sometimes we know that selecting an, a license can be a daunting task. So we have a variety of standard licenses for them to choose for, from. And of course, we offer them assistance through our legal help desk. Now providers come and describe their resources using the clearing share metadata model, which was built upon the MetaShare, the well-known MetaShare model, also having elements from ELG share, ELRC share and the MSL ontology. A clearing share metadata schema has been converted into other formats. And of course, our records are harvested by clearing the alone. So our providers, as we already said, can come and clear in EL and create an and upload XML files that, of course, you have to follow. I have to adhere the clearing cell metadata schema, but they can also use the metadata editor, which, as we see, is a nice and user-friendly graphical interface with tabs and steps. And here they can describe the resource and also upload the actual uh, data in a few steps. The other major part of the platform is the processing services. And we offer two types of services. The ones that are available as web services or accessible either through Clary EL or through links. There are tools that are downloadable also for users. And the NLP web services, which are ready to use pipelines integrated into the infrastructure and accessible through what we call the processing services page. Now we're going to demonstrate how a user can process data sets on the platform. And this is an example of a data set that is hosted at Clarinier. So we browse and we select, for example, corpus cate category. And here the user selects the ones that are processable. Here is the actual tag. Uh, we're going to pick a random corpus. This is a multilingual parallel corpus. They can view the metadata. And then they can click the button use resource. So there are two options here, either download or process. So we're going to click on process. And here are the available tools for this particular corpus. So the user can come and pick, for example, the ILSP post dagger. And since this is a multilingual corpus, there is also a next step that he has to choose the tool for the other language. This was a Greek and German parallel corpus. And before completing the process here, he clicks. This is like a checkout page. These are, these are the tools that you have selected for this particular corpus. He can also see what the output is going to look like. We offer the output in CSV format. 
there is also a bit of information in that pop-up. And this is the case, it's done. So the processing is sent and I will show you next how to get your processing results. And the other thing that we do is that you can come on the platform and upload and process your own data. So this is the Clarineal processing page. These are the ready to use pipelines, sentence splitting, tokenization, climatization. So you can pick any service to use. And here the user is prompted to upload a zip file containing, of course, the text. He uploads it. Okay, this is the first step. Next. He says that he has selected the limitizer and that's it. He can finish the job. And after the job is finished, he will get an email to come back on the platform and get the results. So how is this all possible? Um, I won't get into any technical details since as you can see, um, there are many uh, technologies, modules uh, that integrate together. Uh, the main takeout from this is that the backend is completely separated from the graphical user interface, allowing us to develop them individually by different teams and extend them individually because the one doesn't actually depend on the software used by the other system. Uh, we also use handle.net to assign PIDs to the published resources. Yes, <laughs> and to ensure data accessibility. So we, talk about the, we talked about the user roles um, and the actions that they can actually perform on the platform. And for this case, we offer the Clarineal user dashboard where everything, this is a single point of reference, a single page of reference. So if you are a, valid, a, a provider, this is where you come to upload and describe your resources. If you are a validator, this is where you come to view the validator tasks. If you are a supervisor, this is where you come to assign the tasks. Okay, and if you have processing jobs on the queue, this is where you come to download the, the results. Also, there is an actual link here for the online uh, documentation in the description of the platform. Which brings us to how we support our users. We have the portal with informative information and dissemination material based on language, of course, technology and the accessible, public accessible help desk. I don't have much time. And the NLPL Knowledge Center, where we have co collected all the natural language processing tools, the sign language technology tools. There is an automatic process where we collect publications available for the Greek language, and we provide it here. Uh, the courses available in Greece for students and all the labs and teams working on language technology in uh, Greece. And a future step, of course, is the maintaining and upgrading the platform and enlarging the network with new members. So this goes uh, together, uh, I guess. Uh, and of course, we will continue our outreach activities and the continued support of uh, our users. Uh, sorry <laughs> for taking a bit longer. No, uh, no it's, any, it's fine. It's really very, very questions? good time. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> Hi. Uh, the question is, what is the approximate uh, proportion of resources with data and the resource without data? So do you know um, any center? So maybe some of, uh, most of the resources have uh, data. If we just, you know, uh, weight them in a scale, most of them have uh, data. Thanks for your brilliant work. Um, I have two quick questions. One is instead of uh, uploading a zip file, could it be also that uh, a user would enter a handle from a different data center that you could then also uh, This use is not your uh, uh, implemented here, but it's a nice idea for us to check. Okay, and uh, one other quick question. Once the data has been processed, tagged, would you also then have the last step for the researcher that they could upload the annotated corpus to a concordancer so that they could query it? Um, this is something that we did in the past. We kept the annotated corpus uh, on the platform. Um, but I think that in the future, we don't tend to uh, do uh, this, but if you want to, Yes, we can do that. This is, uh, there is, it is supported by the system. So you can also keep the annotated data also. 
Uh, is the work that you did reusable for other Clarin B centers? Um, I'm gonna afraid. I'm gonna have to disappoint you on that because it's kind of complicated. Yes, uh, I know. This that's is not the software that you just download and. No, no, that's why I asked. You use it. Yeah. No. Okay. 